We obviously have the fish that we're gonna break down and all this, but the remoulade is like, basically what carries everything. And when we eat fish and chips at home, or any kind of thing, you always think the sauce is the main star. Everything else is just a medium to eat the sauce, because it just looks like a weirdo if you're gonna sit there and eat sauce with a spoon. Like that. You don't wanna be that guy. Or maybe you do. Hi, my name is Hallie. I'm from a small seaside town in South Dublin. I'm sous chef in my old restaurant, Oslo. Today we're here in the lovely Kulgrun in this gorgeous Munchies Festival. And we're gonna cook some smorbol with fried fish, crispy onions, and remoulade. So nice and sweet and vinegary, and it just makes no apologies for what it is. I suppose the closest thing that we have at home to a remoulade would be tartar sauce. To my knowledge, it's unique to Denmark. With all our ingredients today, we have quite a few things. Starting with this gorgeous bit of fish. Uh, it's a mackerel, it's one of my all-time favorite fishes. Always looking for that lovely uh, bright-eyed look on it too. Apple cider vinegar and white wine vinegar. Low-grade uh, rapeseed oil. A bit of dirty Carl special. Some Dijon mustard, capers. A load of sugar. Some beautiful Danish organic honey. Happy hen eggs. A bunch of root veg, some crispy, dirty onions. One of my favorite things about Denmark, bog standard curry powder that you get in any school canteen and a gorgeous bit of rye bread. So we're gonna make two pickles today. One is a beer brine. So we're just using a slightly dark ale. Ooh, Jamie Mark. So nice and dark, so you get all those nice malty notes. Who doesn't like beer, man? So a load of honey for sweetness and the apple vinegar, boom. Splash of water. And the big kicker for this is the thyme. Thyme gives it like really nice herbaceous notes and really lifts the pickle to a different level. The next one is your classic Danish pickle. So it's one part sugar, one part white wine vinegar and two parts water. This is gonna go into the heat. Once it comes up to the boil, then we'll lash in all our vegetables and we'll get them cooking as well. So making the remoulade, basically you take a bunch of root veg, cook it in your Danish pickle and blend it with mayonnaise. Here we'll make a slightly more refined one, but still not fancy at all, still nice and dirty. So we're just gonna peel up all these carrots. The first time I ever had it was on Danish hot dogs. And that's what I like. Like that, those filthy, filthy hot dogs. Especially like John's outside Central Station. That is like, to me, the pinnacle of dirty food. Like, we're gonna cut it nice and small. And then we're gonna do the same with the celeriac. Banana shallot to go with the carrots and the celeriac. And, ooh. There you go. I just slice right through my finger. This is what happens when you're an idiot like me, like. Oh, I found them, perfect. Where's your mum when you need her? Do you know what I mean? Oh, gorgeous. These ones are just gonna be folded through the remoulade as well. And a bit of garlic. So that's for the first part of the pickling. And the last thing we put in this is a bit of curry powder. And that's what gives it all its spice, its beautiful yellow color. So this onions is for the pickling on top. So I've cut them in half. Now we're just cutting them into little segments. You just wanna make sure they're all nice and separated so that they all cook evenly through. As you can see, I'm doing a bit of a caramelized uh, brine here. Fucking hell. Oh, it smells delicious. So we have uh, our first pickle up. It's our beer pickle. No reason to have these on the stove. They should be nice and quick to do. The next one, classic Danish pickle. So I'll stick this back on the heat to cook out and just until they're super, super soft so they can be folded through the mayonnaise later on. So back on the heat with them, but this time low. So after we burn all the pickle brine, uh, we can make our mayonnaise. Now, standard mayonnaise, no real recipe, just technique all the time and you season as you go. I always make sure that I keep a bit of the white, just a touch of water, a bit of lemon juice for acidity. And then I need a bit of salt, a bit of Dijon mustard, a bit of vinegar. I'll have my, I suppose you call a low grade rapeseed oil. Yeah, happy days. I'm happy with that thickness. It's good enough to bind all our vegetables and all the rest. If you don't like mayonnaise, you're no friend of mine. Like, it's delicious. Just pop that in the fridge, let it cool down and come together. There's one more thing we need to cut for the remoulade, and that's these gorgeous capers. So we don't need to cook them, we just need to give them a, a quick wee chop. So they've been cooking out, they still have a nice bite to them. So it's important that they cool down, 
if you put it hot into the mayonnaise, the mayonnaise is going to split. And I'll happily just throw all the capers in there now as well. Mackerel is my all-time favorite fish. It's one that my brother and I, we used to catch off the coast of our hometown in Dorky. I'll just be taking the fillets off straight away without removing the guts. I don't want to fanny about. It's cut in underneath the wing like that. And we're just going to take the fillet off in one fell sweep. And then the other side, exact same thing. And just following the spine all the way to the end all the time. So there's a selection of bones that all have this curved nature here. So you cut them all out. We have this lovely half fillet there. So that's the one with all the bones going through it. All the way through. Cut into lovely little diamonds. And there's all our lovely pieces of mackerel. We just need to cook the fish and mix the remoula. Give it a good seasoning on the top. You should hear that sort of like sizzle in the pan, but not like a hard rolling if that makes any sense. And make sure you season the other side as well. So you can see as all the color comes around the outside, means the heat's all penetrating through. You can also see the clear definition of where it's nice and raw still. So I like a lot of heat to come through on the top, and then I'll take it off the heat and just flip the fish over and let that residual heat just come up through the fish. And then it's important we take it off before it overcooks. But if you look closely on this one, you can see the different coloration. So where it's all the way cooked through and where it's nice and medium in the middle. I'm gonna finish the remoulade, cut a bit of rye bread, and just assemble the sandwich ready for eating. So that's the mayonnaise that we had made earlier. And here's all our delicious uh, root veg. Gonna slice up our rye bread, not too thick. So you remoulade, nice chunky mess is what it is. The fish on top. A bit of radish, adds a bit of spice. Crispy onions, so we're in Denmark after all. And the pickled onions that we made earlier in the beer brine. And then some of this lovely dill. Ta-da! <laughs> Rye bread, remoulade, macro, pickles. Lovely Halley-esque smoke hole, my interpretation of a Danish delight. Yeah, just tuck into it, I suppose. Even though I'm not Danish, this brings a lot of nostalgia to me. Sweet, acidic, savory. What more could you want from a smorbold? Happy days, Halley's smorbold. Halley's Danish-Irish contingency plan in a sandwich.